Good morning. Ding ding. <clears throat> Asking about my red candle. Gork, what's happening? Well, everything was fine. And then uh, some bears showed up this morning and bought some pets. Bulls are still there, but there's a little bit of extra bearishness around the money. So we might see a test of like 65, 60. Although I feel like the bears will be quick to capitulate. My 4770Ps are alive and well. How? You're gonna laugh. Am I? Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate that the only thing that matters is is the upside. Well, I guess let's get let's get ready for for the action. Wait, where the fuck are my positions? Boom. Nice. Win NVDS position. Ew. Um, hopefully never. Big downs today, please. Probably not. Uh, we do have data coming out at 10, though. Like, regional Fed data. Redbook came out. It was, it was kind of okay. We're looking at another fun day for a tap. Very, very possibly. I think Top has like 3 million ETF FTDs today. I'll tell my grandchildren about the day. The SPX was red for 30 seconds. Nice. What do you think about Nike? Could be a swing. Could be, actually. Um... I wouldn't say I'm overly fond of it, but uh, yeah, there, there, there could be some potential there. Might take a while. Mara at 2895. I thought you said it couldn't maintain above Gamma Max. Yeah, that's correct. It will eventually fall below Gamma Max. I don't know when. As long as people keep buying calls on it, it can stay up there. What's Gamma Max on it now? And Gamma Max is like almost at the money on it. It's not that. It's not that far off. Gamma Max is at twenty five. It's what almost ten percent above that. But it's going to weigh on further upside.
Jesus Christ, that call back there is insane. Although, put, put Delta exceeded call Delta for the first time today. And call Delta is starting to fall off. So I would say, I would say it's, it's near its peak. This is its longest sustained period above Gamma Max uh, in the last, like, two years. Although it did come close in March of 2022. And that lasted about five days. So we're getting, we're probably getting close to a top there. Um, okay, so... First things first, I'm going to pick up a call, vertical, the fuck, excuse me, oh, Hmm. Let's see. So if this starts to, <clears throat> if it breaks above, so 80 should offer a little bit of resistance. If it breaks above 80, uh, it can start running. 75 is like the peak of put interest right now. And it kind of falls off. Yeah, resistance is at 60 to the downside, 80 to the upside. Um, Kooky. Do you have upstart gamma max? Um, yes. Upstart Gamma Max is now at 51.39. If Upstart falls below 45 uh, today, that's pretty bearish. Even more bearish below 40. So Charm's going to flip negative on it at 45, and then Gamma flips negative on it at 40.50. You planning on shorting Mara soon then? Maybe. I don't know. I don't really want to fuck with the, the crypto fucking miner squeezes. They may have, you know, more than more than one leg, right? So I don't want to get stuck shorting them. They pull back a little and then everyone piles back into calls on the next bounce. Good morning, Pickle Man. Yesterday at the end of the stream, you said a vol event may occur within the next two weeks. Do you really think this might happen? Yes. Yeah, I think I think they're really pushing short vol to some serious extremes. Um, yeah. I don't think this is sustainable. I mean, it's it's gone on for like four weeks already, but continuing to do it's going to be tough, right? You're you're always you're always shorting vol from a lower and lower level, right? So you're never you're never like vol's never really getting back to that like 
uh 16 like 20 level where it's really profitable to short right right now for like f several weeks now they've been shorting you know sub 14 vix and it doesn't really take a lot to push vix back above 14 and so yeah i think i think uh i think it's it's pretty reasonable to assume that we'll get some sort of smaller volatility event like we'll see vix climb vix climb back to 1620 uh to a range where it's more reasonable for more short vol to pile back in otherwise they're just compounding all their vix positions with with vol at like 13 which sucks QQQ options trading messed up. Is that because of the dividend? Um, <clears throat> maybe. I don't know what's going on with it. Let's... Oh, that's weird. Maybe. Uh, yeah, is today the X dividend date? They might be trying to adjust it for the like brokers might be doing it like adjustment for the dividend. And so it's fucking up the options chain. Twenty one dollar or twenty one sixty per share. Yeah, that that that's about that's about right. So twenty two cents. So yeah, it looks like they're trying to it looks like they're trying to dividend adjust the price and it's it's fucking up the options chains. I'm sure they'll get it fixed. Worth just getting a few far dated spy puts for a vol event or something safer. I mean, that's <clears throat> that's where most of my puts are right now. It's just I'm just targeting vol. Interesting. I'm going for the short on tap. A lot of fucking liquidity there. Um. <clears throat> Add to the Neo position while it's down. IWM looks kind of choppy. Let's see. How's everything else doing this morning? Fubo's up a little bit. Shizu, okay, Shizu. Beyond is kind of flat on open. It's beyond looking. Okay.
Where we bought all the calls so they had to turn it off. Hashtag free GMA. Oh, Jesus. How's Dixie dropping, but JPY is just flat? Dixie's weighted against six other currencies, bub. My 120C for Fubo I left is up 1100%. <clears throat> What? Tubs getting murdered? The price is not seen since yesterday afternoon. <clears throat> Good morning, Gert. Would that vol event come with a bit of a market correction? Uh, ideally. How deep? I don't know. I mean, maybe 46, 4,500. But I don't think it would go much deeper than that. I think then what happens is everyone piles back into short vol, but it's more unstable. And prone to shocks. And then we get some kind of actual shock. Well, how do you see Tup going? Uh, let's see if it turns around here or not. But... With the amount of covering that needs to be done on it, I I, I could see it running to three, may, maybe higher, maybe a little higher than three. That doesn't seem impossible. Tips crossed today, which is neato. And liquidity is still unbelievably tight, so let's see how the morning short shakes out, what they get it down to. <clears throat> if the 250 pushes back into the money, it's probably in a good position to run further today. One more day until I can take my position on the dumbest stock I've bought since Revlon. <laughs> you and me both. Speaking of which, is that still going down? Oh, caught a bid. I don't know what to do with that. Interesting. Man, they're shorting the fuck out of VIX again. All right, let's. Yeah, it's still down a little bit. Change it choppy. It's upstart down. Upstart looks like it's pushing back up for Gamma Max again. So Apple down, and Google down, Amazon up, Tesla up, Meta up, Microsoft down, Nvidia up. So they're pumping the Mag Four, <coughs> the the Baby Four. No, oh yeah, don't buy it, Gork. Why? Are you trying to front run me? Cause you'll make it get expensive. <laughs> How much of it do you think I'm gonna buy? Tesla did a strong China weekly deliveries, hinting to a strong quarter four. Yeah, I heard Tesla actually lost out on deliveries to BYD. When we first got started, what kind of strategy did you employ to build capital to ultimately play some of these risky things? 
uh, initially I did a lot of scalping, um, equities and crypto. This was mostly what I did for like the first six months I traded. It was easy. It was a bull market. It was probably a little bit unfair, but here you go. <laughs> Sorry we missed you at my family Christmas. Hopefully you can make it next year. But yeah. Anyways, thanks for all you and the quants and mods and DJs do. Hashtag free the Vix. Thank you so much, Daniel Mayo, Splatterglot. I appreciate it. And the invite. Where are we going to buy Hot Pocket Futures? I don't know, Zapdos. Maybe sometime today. Gamma Max on coin? Just fucking in the dust. Give me a second. I'll try to find it. It was it was pretty it was pretty far below spot the last few days. It's, it doesn't look like it's good. I'm sorry, it's just above spot. Uh Coin GM is at 180. There's still a lot of actual call buying there. Like Gamma Max is just going up with the price. Like Mara blew through Gamma Max, but Coin Coin Gamma Max is staying kind of in lockstep so yeah i, I probably wouldn't f fuck with shorting it yet <clears throat> there's a there's an absolute shitload of call buying there it's starting to die off just because bitcoin's giving up a bit of ground but not enough Who do you think that was first? China invades Taiwan or war with Iran? I think shipping breaks down in the Red Sea first. I think then that will prop, like, that'll propagate a, a larger, a larger conflict. Why are markets behaving as if they're in a bull market? Are we actually in a bull market? That's debatable. I want pumpies. I want dumpies at town. So I'm expecting the jolly green peanut on the dot instead. You really think that the fucking Fed regional reports are going to cause dumpies? I don't know. <clears throat> I wish I had the same kind of faith. Do you think TLT will break a hundred dollars today? That's actually a good question. Um, yeah, it could. The 10 years really getting fucking hammered today. I think it'll depend a lot on the auction at one. But it might be worth straddling or something. I think China integrates Taiwan without a single shot getting fired. I think if they did a lot of fabs might get blown up though <laughs> how would a war in iran impact tup's distribution last i heard they shipped all of their containers out of a, a u-haul storage facility located in modesto california so it shouldn't shouldn't have a big shouldn't have a big impact I don't know if that data is current, but I actually sold to open tub calls. Oh, you're fucking dead. What if Fed regional reports are super duper ultra mega hot prints? No one will care. <laughs> Look at VIX right now, man.
I am familiar with Esval. You could do that if you want. You want to play the inverse price action on Esval? Maybe, maybe wait until they just crush Vix into the dirt, because that seems to be the goal right now. Vix is behaving totally normal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, recently, you're not wrong. Did you know that nothing bad can ever happen again? That's what indicators of volatility are telling me is true. Not only can nothing bad ever happen again, no one's hedged for something bad happening ever again. <clears throat> so risk perception in the market is wildly skewed. People are over, over, over bullish. So, you know, probably, probably calls are good. <laughs> Santa came to town drowning the Vix in his jolly chair. That sounds predatory. My Google puts I bought this morning up almost 100% already. Nice, man. Oh, yeah, we're deep in extreme greed. I'm very slightly suspicious that the action on VIX is perhaps, maybe, and I know this may sound crazy, a mechanical effect of something else. I know, I know, crazy talk. If you can't define the thing it's a mechanical effect of, dork, then yes, it is crazy talk. But you're not wrong. I just want to see if you can figure out what it is. What do you think it is? You don't know? Come on, you can do it. All right. Well, okay. Uh... So yields, not directly yields, but related to top futures. Nailed it. I don't buy volatility. It's cheap. I thought you already had VXX $80 calls. SPXU trading for one to two cents on the weekly strike above. Interesting. Top futures? Are they are the delivery in stock in containers? It's containers. Break 80 and ride to 4,800. Yeah, that's pretty much how it's set up. I mean, a little bit of resistance at like... 85 95 but not a lot uvxy actually getting murdered more than vix or at least yesterday it did yesterday uvxy opened down <laughs> vix opened up <laughs> I'm waiting to get into beyond. Do you think sub seven is possible again in the near future? Yes. It's going to be really hard, but it's not, it's not impossible for them to hit that.
Is there a lot of resistance at 80 or just waiting for the report? Probably just waiting on the report or put buyers are buying at like 75 as we inch to the upside. <coughs> waiting on the report. Report should be out though. Or just out. Yeah. Richmond Fed Manufacturing, negative 11 versus the expected negative 6. Um, Fed Services, oh, Fed Manufacturing Shipments, negative 17. Fed Services Index, 0 versus the prior 1, or unexpected 1. So, contraction in services in the Richmond Fed District and a massive contraction in manufacturing. Totally, <clears throat> totally not barreling towards a recession at full speed, guys. It's okay. Although, I will say that that data is not prompting a lot of response from indexes. We have Dallas Fed Services at 1030. And I would say we probably pump into the five-year note auction. Sounds bullish. What else could it be? You say that like there's more than one outcome for the data. Markets pumping just feels wrong, gross, icky. Okay. I'm ready for those uppies. Oh, fuck. Why did you buy a call? Are you trying to ruin everything? How do I get rid of you? A local bank is doing a stock offering at $28 a share. Minimum purchase, 1,000 shares. Max 150. Since banks are so sound and resilient, I'm thinking full port, 150,000 shares. Interesting. And they're not currently public? Or is this going to be like shares and private equity? I mean, a bank starting right now could do very well. They don't have any of the baggage that older banks have. They will be running into tighter credit environments, but they'll also be lending at insane rates. Unless they're already old and they're just trying to get bailed out. I don't want to see their financials. <clears throat> so blindly buying 150,000 shares. There are several community banks that shareholders were wiped out after the 2008 financial crisis. But that's why you want to look at their fucking books. They're about 10 years old. Oh, that's gross. Yeah, that's, their shelf life's up. If we all give you... 
money. Will you start a bank for us and make us all wealthy beyond belief? And I'll make myself wealthy. Here's you guys to get some. Do I like this? If you look at Google for me, can this continue down a lot? Um, 140.32 is the next resistance. So like another dollar fifty. Careful though. Be careful at like uh, 141.15. And 140.50. Both of those have been support recently. Why are banks allowed to be functionally insolvent? But for some reason, I'm not allowed to buy a $4 million house with 25000 worth of assets to my name. <laughs> oh, you just need to find the right lender. Someone will give it to you. Also, credit rating. Your dead husk is a lot harder to milk for value than someone else's. Or, well, than a bank's. Like the stream. Yeah, if you guys could, that'd be cool. Happy belated Christmas to you too, McChuggets. I gotta wait for my money pit, aka the wife, and Crotch Goblins to ask one question. Are my cat 310Cs, 1-5, about to prompt? Happy holidays, man. No. Well, maybe. I don't know. Cat needs to break. A very long-term trend. I suppose it could. But it does look unlikely. Larry Chang might give you a loan. How passionate are you about dog food? <laughs> Boston Consulting Group. I'm willing to full port pickle bank. But I need assurances that the bear song plays in the lobby during all hours of operation. I not have it any other way. Well... A bear song. I mean, you gotta mix it up. It can't just be the same one over and over again. Like the stream? You hurt my 4770P's feelings yesterday by calling them a bad position. Well, they were. I don't know why you had to buy new ones today. That seems a bit over the top as a method of revenge. Who's this guy? His name is Antonio Novikov. Why is, is he a, a Russian Italian? He's got connections to two different. It's oh, okay. They don't have websites or branches, but they did have suitcases full of money. All right. I mean, if you're going to make enemies, it's probably better to make white-collar ones. It's cup clawing back like all of Gork's exes. 
<laughs> uh, well, you know. I'm long on suitcases full of money. That's a decent business. I got a red panda coffee cup. It's a lot cooler than your mods. I'll sell it to you for 3% less than his famous mug are you in. Ooh, it's full of coffee. Hey, Girk, can you share your thoughts on Palantir for 2024? I'm stuck in it at $26 a share. Why? How did that happen? What did... What, did you buy it at the top? Did it even get to $26 a share? It didn't. So you've just had it forever. Why don't you sell in the money fucking cover calls on it when the price is up? Been bagging that since 2021, huh? Get that cost basis down. The fuck are you doing? I don't hate them over like a five year period, but um you gotta you gotta take advantage of these periods where he hops on board with Bitcoin or AI or whatever the new hype tech is, right? I clicked wrong today and I bought temp calls for Jan twenty six. Thanks for filling in the Delta. Do I need the extra week of Theta or best to cut quick? I mean, it's not going to hurt you, I guess, as long as it keeps going up. Is there some OI at the strike? It was before I found the stream. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, yeah, get 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 fucking cracking. You got a lot of it looks like you've got a a lot of uh a lot of cost basis that you need to shave off. I don't know how deep you're into it, but When Jimmy under 13, four or five weeks, something like that, maybe, might be longer. I will say that the shorts aren't being very aggressive right now. They have the liquidity to short. There's plenty of shares. Oh, shit. We're going to test 60? Fuck, I'm going to hedge this. God damn it. Look, I'm looking at Palantir. Mm 
Maybe I don't need to. Fifteen, kind of bearish. Took up. That's interesting. All buying's picking up. I still feel like the range here is open to a test of 60. So this could get a little bit of continuation still. Oh, Neo, it's like you want me to over leverage. Bear sign below 40, please. Bear sign below 40. But why do you think we're going below 40? Uh, I still think 60. There's a big call wall at 60. I, I see. I see what you mean, but... I feel like the odds aren't great. No, I just think that some of the puts that are there are going to print and then sell off and then we bounce again. Is anything happening if Dixie goes sub one hundred? I mean, what do you mean? No. It's kind of a big deal, I guess. But I don't think like anything immediate is gonna happen. Call sell off or put buying to create that drop. Uh puts getting hedged as they fall in the money. Um the fall off put buying started at like ten ten. Picked up into 10.15. Kind of flat now. It was like 75 and 70 puts. There's still, there's still kind of, now we're getting a little bit of call selling. Stepped up for a bit and I missed the market crash. There's still like ten more dollars, maybe. Uh, maybe. That's a big maybe.
Futures. So technical breakout would be like forty eight ten, roughly. I think like so yeah if this if this rejects off the trend again um then maybe 48 10. there's still a little bit of momentum left Does Fubu see 250 again? It's not impossible. I'm starting to think more and more Fubu might get bought out. Ooh, big Vic short. Damn. All right, maybe they should. Maybe they try to turn it around here. They're just going for the gap fill. That's going to stuff momentum. Still a lot of call selling. Looks like they're kind of giving up on 4,800 a bit. Uh, which puts us like 40... Forty seven ninety ninety five. So maybe eighty five to the upside if we test sixty. I will say that can come right back. It seems like a tricky day to play either direction. It's a, I, I think it depends on how long it takes for like downside like the downside positioning to give up here. If they're pretty quick about it and it goes in the money right away, then I think a reversal will be pretty fast. If it drags out for a while and the puts don't want to give up or their positions compound because we're trading flat, then it could take then it could take a lot more time and get a lot more choppy. <clears throat> but there's like there's a decent put positioning here at 70 and then uh like quite a bit at 65. And then a call wall at sixty, right? So if we can if we can fail here, get those in the money, like the sixty five seventy in the money quick, those capitulate, then we can bounce, maybe hit like ninety ninety five by end of day. Um 
If they're able to fully reverse it past the gap here, then maybe the puts just give up. Um, that can push us higher. Uh, or we trade flat. Call positioning keeps building to the upside and put positioning keeps building to the downside and we get stuck. This is this is the worst scenario. So it would have been it would have been better if the bulls were a little less aggressive about trying to catch the knife and they'd let more of the puts go in the money, but that's not really their deal. Just that like that there. Long time subscriber, never played an SPX option. I wouldn't get in on that, but I'm not sure where to start or educate myself. Hmm. Like you want to get on um, scalping SPX options? You just you just buy them. But, I mean, paper trade for a while, get comfortable with it, but most of it's learning your risk management. and understanding intraday trading levels but i would spend i would spend a decent amount of time paper trading before diving into anything is the most liquid index in the world so it's a gap on the consecutive one minute candles during market hours are you talking about es those are gaps on es Record share of S and P five hundred companies underperform as weirdest bull market in decades marches on. Yeah, I've decided I'm no longer playing the market now. I'm buying Beanie Babies. Ooh, so crypto. Are you bullish or bearish in general? Not really either right now. Kind of kind of feeling neutral about the whole thing. He's talking about DDS. No. The best thing to do is not trade options at all. That's ridiculous. Plenty of people have su Just because you guys suck at it doesn't mean other people aren't successful. Just learn your risk management. Figure out a strategy that you can deploy effectively and then stick to it. Who often Neo was it Tesla? I don't think Neo's taken that big of a hit. Little one. It'll be fine, right? They have news. Might be BYD and uh Tesla's delivery numbers.
Are there portable bidets? Yes. Are Squishmallows the new Beanie Baby? I don't know if they're actually worth anything, but maybe? I had a decent strategy on GME, but I pulled the plug on it too early. Well, you have a tendency to that. Bipolar bear. Tesla and BYD's delivery numbers are bad because everyone wants a Neo. No, their delivery numbers were good. They had good delivery numbers. But Neo's Neo sales were up like 75% in the third quarter. They're not doing badly either. They got an automaton for Crimbus. Now I'm extra annoying. Do you mean an ottoman? What an odd gift. I like it, but it's very strange. Neo is where I first learned about covered calls. I bought in at like two fifty and I got called away at three dollars. Excellent. I can't tell if this is reversing or not. Yeah. The BOG minutes from last night significant. I don't think there were any surprises. USD JPY stayed pretty flat. Automaton is a Japanese synthesizer with a puppet face that helps shape the sound and vibrato. Huh. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. How much liquidity is left on top today? Not much. <laughs> None? There was, there was never any to begin with. I expect some new pickle songs from that Japanese puppet synthesizer. I kind of do too. Maybe, maybe like a video to accompany them.
This has to fall close to 47.60 to get those puts to take profit. 65. But, yeah. There's still like a little bit of a bearish push. I don't know if the momentum on futures will spill over or not. Really, really fucking strong resistance at 48.20. And we would have to break that to to get that lower test, so... Oh, is that gonna fucking stop me out? Yeah, it is. So I should probably go lower. Gap fill. Little tiny head and shoulders. Should I pick up another put? Maybe not. Ah. Seventy five. That was a good fill. Damn. <clears throat> that was a very good fill. I think you broke it. I did not. Five percent. Uh, have they run out of Shval to short? Yields are getting kind of ugly. 
we're one and three month they're kind of finding a bottom Commodities are pushing up again. So there's a little, there's a little bit of volume on the futures push, not a ton. Although I do suspect if we break below forty-eight twenty, there'll be a lot more. That's where we're really looking for that that big push. I'm logged DVN for the dividend and long term value play. I sold a June 2024 CC slightly above my cost basis. Plan to roll it out as it nears expiration. What are some pros and cons of doing that? That seems fine. Uh, I mean, I guess the, the con would be that, you know, oil spikes kind of hard and you could get you could get you know blown out and the price could the price could reignite but i don't i don't think that's a huge worry as well as huge a worry with dvn as it is with some of the some of the other like big oil stocks so you're probably okay it tends to be a bit tamer than things like oxy or zom chevron QQQ options are fixed now. Thank God the bulls can buy calls again. Yeah, QQQ options were broken. All right. um, there's a part of me that doesn't want to lose any money here. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Still a lot of buying on the 70 put. Hmm. Some call buying at 75. Options. Nearly enough. Pretty even. Do you think now is a good time to go long VIX? I think it's very cheap. I just saw Cohen's tweet to Kanye, and it makes me want to revisit Libertarian Tears, Cohen's song written by ChatGPT. <laughs> Hear me out. Okay, look, man. Double decker couches are going to be all the rage when everyone starts losing their houses. Fuck. I got stopped out. Eh, well, I got stopped out at a profit, but I still got stopped out. Shitty. We have to corner the market now. Also, birds aren't real. I don't think we need to, we need to corner the double decker couch market. Where are they going to put them? Is the second deck just a roof? I'm a little worried about the assignment risk too, but I figure I can just keep rolling a CC for as long as I'm in the position, and chip away at the cost basis. Yeah, I mean it's a way to pick up additional yield. 
I tend to I tend to try to use my cover calls on DVN in line with my expectations for the oil market. So right now I'm not selling them. I think oil is going to go up, but if I think oil's peaked or something, then I'll usually like toss a toss a couple in the money or as many fills as I can get. It's not the most liquid on the options chain. Do you still think we push for four eighty seven ninety? Yeah, I don't see why not. Oh, goody. I made eight dollars a contract after commissions. Killing it. I want to get sixty five Taco Bell chicken quesadillas sent to your apartment. Fucking pallet of quesadillas. Uh they're not going to be melted properly in the middle. They're going to be covered in that nasty ranch sauce. <clears throat> what will happen to my rad put that I sold now that it's gone? Rad's not gone. You don't get a sign on it. Who puts ranch on quesadilla? Taco Bell. Taco Bell does. So boring. I want to add to these. I can just close them. How many day trades do I have? I have one. I don't want to sell puts here, right? Oh, there we go. Of course, right after I get stopped out. IWM. I just want to look at QQQ. Still range to sixty five sixty? No, that's still there, yeah.
right now the put sellers and call buyers are kind of outweighing outweighing the draw of the downside but um they're still they're still kind of fighting with it hmm thanks dork Yeah, or we just bounce. Like, the bear flag already broke down, right? And it didn't get very low. Otherwise, it would have piled back into those pits. Yeah, Dork's super duper bearish. Yeah, well, things are happening today that haven't happened in four days, so. Although, I will say they don't look as bearish as they did last time. Stop buying that fucking stock. House munch. I don't know what you're talking about, man. It's not like I have some sort of, like, you know, just constantly filling order with a variable limit for 50,000 shares. <laughs> I'm right back. yeah yeah i i was saying i had coin calls right before it like really took off i, I had 95s and i got stopped out of them at 100 didn't pay attention for a couple of days and it was at 120 one piece or ooh The disconnect between the market and the economy is getting out of hand. It usually has to before any type of corrective action takes place. 
I can't believe Futures fucking tested 4818 and we didn't find any fucking sellers. Unbelievable. Could a Volmageddon ever happen over the access period when most big traders are away? Probably not. I, I mean, something like Volmageddon could happen any time that the vol is over short, which it is. Um, and there's a shock, right? There's a left tail event that people are unprepared for, which they are because nobody cares about proper volatility hedging. XRT just won't stop. I bought puts too early. Please send help. You were supposed to wait, turd. What are you doing? You can't short retail while they're still fucking covering all the shorts. You gotta wait, you gotta wait, for, you gotta at least wait till it falls back below 70. Does the downside look like it's lost its steam? No. <laughs> um, but, but the bulls are pushing a lot harder than the bears. Which signal line? What the fuck is going on at GameStop? Since the day I sold CCs, it's going up and up. Well, you sold CCs too soon. And the sector is not really getting shorted yet. Like mid and small caps have been running a lot, so no one's piling into shorts on GameStop right now. They will once once all the shorts are blown out, they'll start they'll start shorting it more heavily. But I'd say I would say right now it's like probably the least aggressive post run shorting on GME I've ever seen. They're keeping it from like breaking out or anything, but they're not really they're not really trying to push the price down very much. The tups tips crossed this morning. Not a lot of volume on it yet, but we may get more. Okay. I'm gonna get something now. This should be this should be volatile, right? Something volatile on SPX, I don't know. You talk a bit about BTU price movement seems to run up and sell off in the same way each week. It's had a lot of institutional sells lately, um, which long-term shorts are probably using as exit liquidity. Um, but there's been a lot of conflicting data out of China um and btu's share price is heavily tied to chinese 
the Chinese economy and the Chinese demand for coal. Um, and so it, it tends to fluctuate a lot on that news. I wouldn't say that its share price has been moving around wildly. It's It's been pretty much in the expected range for some time. But it's, I mean, it's, it's doing its thing. Might start moving down now after failing the test at 2550. Hey, a volatile thing happened. Dork, I said a volatile thing would happen, and it happened. We got, look at, look at this, we got fucking 16 bips. 16 bips of VIX. The volatile thing is in ten dollar move and then back again. Yeah, it's a possibility. Four bips on SPX. What matters is that I called it. I didn't say it was gonna be good. Holy fuck, I sold EXR thirty dollars early. You think I would have held through that dip if it wasn't gonna moon? Russell's giving up today. Yeah, a little bit. NW. Look at the long term chart. You know? <laughs> no probably probably don't pile back into it if 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 rate if 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 like the rate structure isn't gonna change in the early half of 2024 yields will probably go back up again and that'll hurt them a lot I'm I'm probably going to sell. I wanted to hold it for like a couple of years, but it went up way too fast. Volatile thing going to happen on SPX in the next six months. Well, that's useless. Is it too late to get into top? Not necessarily. I wouldn't. It's just risky. Like it, it, all of these, all of these like low float short squeeze plays are super risky. So don't, don't overexpose yourselves to them. They have really good risk reward, right? So if, if if there is a payout, you can make a lot of money. And a lot of people that have been in it have already made a bunch of money on the move from two to two fifty, right? So um you're you you could you could be buying it at a point where you're kind of bucking the trend. And you don't want to buy other people's bags, so careful. Be careful with it. But I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's run the entirety of its course yet. No, that's just what I tell you, Grim. Too. What are you definitely not buying right now? Mag Seven. <laughs> like without a doubt uh indexes beyond seems more promising now than top which just ran well top can still run a lot more and it's 
it's currently being covered, whereas Beyond is currently being shorted. Um, but yeah, Beyond is, I mean, it's surprisingly stable given how hard they're shorting it. Part of that has to do with the mandatory covering, right? Um, and the fact that it's still on Reg Show, it makes its downside more resilient. But um, liquidity can swing both ways there, and, and Beyond can move down hard rapidly. Um, so I would wait until they start covering on Beyond again before getting into anything shorter dated. Like they ran the stock a hundred percent. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna use whatever liquidity they freed up uh from doing that to short it back down again before they start covering more. So push and pull. Uh I'm gonna pull individual strands of hair for my beard so I can feel something today. Nice. I'm sure I'm sure this'll start moving at some point. I don't I don't really think the the short side is fighting back very hard. And it'll probably it'll probably loosen up into the end of the day. There's still a lot of out of the money call positioning at like 80, 85, 90, 95, so the end of the day still looks pretty bullish, especially if we don't if we don't break down further than we already have. So this is this is where the situation gets bearish. If we break down and we fall below 4760, then we can keep going down. But if we break down test 4760 bounce, we're probably going to see 4785 to 95. Um and then uh the other scenario is we trade flat at 70 until the puts give up and then they use cheap call buying to push us up and if that happens we could hit like 4800 so this is this is like the bear case this is the kind of mid case and this is the bull case Right now, we're kind of in between these two. But as the day drags on and we continue to not fail 4770, the more bullish it gets. It's called trichotillomania. Pulling your hair out? I don't think those people do it because they want to feel something. I think it's because they can't resist the urge to do it. So time to pick up some 4780Cs for cheap insurance. It'd be a lot cheaper if we break down to 4760, right? Dave Duquesne, of course. I have trichotillomania. I pull out all my eyelashes when I'm stressed. Ah! You sick fuck. Why eyelash? Can't you... Ugh. It's too springy. How do you even pull out an eyelash? I couldn't do it if I tried. Ow, fuck. No, ow.
That's like a combination of Pika and Tretch. Stop talking about it. <laughs> Thoughts on NVIDIA? Overpriced, but it's not really moving. Forty-five DTE straddles. I don't know. Finally got my cold plunge set up. First day hitting three minutes. It's terrible and amaz amazing. Good purchase with profits. Ha <laughs> ha. And like an ice bath? Yeah? Why? All right. Dopamine. That's when US gridlocking itself politically, so Ukraine loses the war and Russia starts looking at the Baltics funny. I don't think Ukraine's not gonna lose the war anytime soon. And they've just gotta survive Putin, right? And then hope the next guy isn't as bad. Russia lost all of their able-bodied men. They aren't invading anyone else. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Not to mention that pretty much everyone in Eastern Europe who wasn't already in NATO is now in the process of joining. Yep. No one knows who's next in line. That's the thing about power vacuums. Target for XRT? I don't have a target for XRT. Turd's shorting it. I'm not. I don't have anything to say about HA. Their, their legal issues are unresolved.
Would a missile hitting a ship in the Suez Canal count as a volatility event? Probably not. Although, I suppose it could... The ship that got hit could block the canal, and that could create a lot of volatility. Wait, you pay money to transfer wire transfer? Wire transfers are free. Not for the poors, oh. Well, not international, but... My wire transfers are free. Get a better bank. This is just silly because the holder takes all the money and collects interest on it while it transfers. Yeah. What's the story of VIX being shorted? It's still being shorted. If the missile hit a U.S. Navy ship in the Red Sea, I'd call it a vol event. I don't know. I feel like I feel like those Houthi rebels and their three hundred dollar drones carrying russian grenades are pretty pretty accurate like they're probably just gonna hit container ships we're still working on free trading of stocks and etfs up here in canada no one cares about canada aj so I'm trying to make it fetch a thing what's the mechanism going on there selling puts within the auction window of the VIX. Top Finna? It's been Finna all day. Nice, turd. Thanks. Nothing more to it? Uh... There could be structural, like, vol convexity shorting going on for oil and dollar reasons, but I wouldn't say it's anything more excessive than we've seen previously. You know, we're talking about it cryptically. It wasn't really cryptic. I was just fucking with Doric. <laughs> Possible that the current push for 4,800 is entirely Tom Lee, Funstrat, attempting to prove themselves correct. His target for the year was 5,000, so he's got a lot of pushing to do. Well, it was 5,000, and then it was like 4,950, and then it was 4,900, and then it was 4,850. I think it's 4,850 now. He keeps dropping it to try to be closer, but I think he's still going to mess. Would you mind taking a look at Riot? What do you think the top could be? Thank you. I have no idea. Most most of them are, like, short squeezing, right? Um, it's above Gamma Max right now. I might be getting close to a top here. Maybe between here and 1850. Call interest is starting to break down and short puts are closing. So yeah, it, it might start going down soonish. The problem with this is if crypto, so the problem with any of them is if short positions start piling in, right? And they think a top's been found. Um, and then like Bitcoin runs hard again, right? Um, all the longs are going to pile right back in and fuck your short.
Ratatouille? It's a fantastic movie. Are puts starting to give up? Not really. No. They're well, they're losing, but they're not giving up. I guess it per bit is 13k. All right. So they really don't like the happening. Decent company from what I saw. They they mine imaginary money. That's I don't think that's the structural basis for a strong company. I don't care what Mara is at. I'm not I'm not involved with it at all. That's about Fifteen percent above Gamma Max. Are we getting trapped in this range for today? I hope not. There's not there's not like a lot of persistent put buying still, so we probably won't get trapped. It's the last two years in the stock market simply a function of liquidity. Well, 2022 was a function of tighter financial conditions. And then 2023 was absolutely a function of liquidity. Uh, 20 and 2021 was a, was a bit of, it was a bit of both. It was largely momentum driven at first and then funded by the Fed. Saying they have a solid foundation is like saying you're a real estate magnet because you're on property in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I believe in the the moat of crypto miners. I don't. I don't think. No. Yeah. Is the auction leaning one way or another? It doesn't matter. Do they just pump on auction regardless of the data? Probably. At least the neutral positioning on the put side will fall off after the auction one way or another. Right? Either the puts will go in the money and they'll close, or they'll close because they were wrong. There's micro strategy. Micro strategy has an obscene amount of Bitcoin. I think Riot was around before Drunken Sailor went full port. Same time, roughly, I think. Well, at least when Riot went public, right? They went public as a spec. My brother-in-law was a crypto miner. He was just a hermit and lived in the desert. 
and would run it all day to offset his cost of solar. I had a buddy who used to mine actual fuck tons of F, like way, way, way back when. He gave me a bunch of it. That was cool. What's your most liked stream? I have no idea. Are you asking what stream I like? I don't watch streamers. Oh, I have no fucking clue. Will you tip the DoorDash guy eight Bitcoin because the pizza was getting hot? No. I never tipped anyone a Bitcoin. That sounds like a whole process. Especially back then. So is Gree. Gree is a renewable energy crypto miner. You gotta start somewhere, Grim, too. <clears throat> Left your tip. It's a Bitcoin wallet with point zero 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 one BTC. All you gotta do is redeem it. Redeem its use. Redeem it. Use its access token written on the receipt. Go to a trusted BTC depository and unfreeze the wallet. <laughs> yeah, I see that, Dork. I don't know if we should be using turgidity as a technical term, though. Could Vix be flatter? Yeah. Look at these temporarily unavailable features on the desktop. Hmm. Interesting. Man, Weebles Weebles got some serious tut baggies. <laughs> <laughs>
Yo, guac, green candle. I see that. So we're done with downies for today? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I heard of the Bitcoin pizza guy. Do you think j has any notion of what he's unleashed? With stocks like Mara up 10% every day? What do you think is going through his mind seeing the stock market ripping like it's 2021? Dude's probably just staring at his coin app all day going, look at, look how I dodged the securities ban for the Fed. I did see Deloitte was using Kilt and Dot for IoT logistics, temp tracking devices, temp, contra temp controlled freight recorders that can't be manipulated and signed go guarantee authenticity okay cool since short vix from 13 to 11 seems like free money oh god um what happened to tup overnight i got some calls yesterday and they don't look happy did you buy them at the top why did you buy calls yesterday and not today Like, I bought more calls today, and they're, 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 I mean, they're not great, but they're not down very much. I'm not short either one. Interesting. Intraday tips for top, they're still diverging. I have Jan 19 calls on it. What do I, I don't have puts on any. What do I have puts on? Y'all are chasing miners while I'm buying up AI protocol tokens so I can be Greg Sugar Mama in 2025. We're not the same. Oh, God. I need to get rid of all the crypto people. I don't care about your coins. Leave me alone. Thank you, regards, Geeky. Also, if you do happen to get in a position to be my sugar mama, dope. I, I do want you to know it comes with an excessive manicure bill, but I'm sure it won't be a problem. How do you think JFL feels about destroying the U.S. dollar? Probably about as good as he feels about destroying the yen. I mean, if you're going for a Manny, you're getting a petty, hurtful, full beef, right? Like, what's an extra 30 minutes? Oh, thank God. Do you have someone already? We could use my guy.
I wonder if I thought you were gay. There's nothing gay about having good hygiene, Maeve. Just because you have like 30 semen demons and can't take any time for yourself, don't don't put that on us, okay? <laughs> Listen to Coldplay. Cleanliness is being close to godliness. I mean, being close to godliness is just being further from the poor. So, yeah. That's why we used to worship royalty, right? And assumed that they were there because God put them there because they weren't covered in shit. <laughs> we're like, man, they're clean. They must be doing something right. No one cares what Jesus said. What are the technical signs we should look for to indicate markets have finally reached a top? I, you know, I, I would probably look for them going down. That might be a good sign. Jesus was like a hippie outside a fish concert. I'm guessing your Italian grandma might cross herself hearing you talk like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. Actually, no. Maybe not. Italians and Irish have a weird relationship with, with Jesus. You know, they do whatever the fuck they want and then ask for forgiveness. So it's more like a get out of jail free card than it is, you know, less guilt on the Italian side. That's for sure. What are your thoughts on psychedelics? similar to my thoughts on people talking about crypto is beyond the only stock getting shorted into the dirt today no apple is also getting shorted into the dirt if that makes you feel better says google bro what You don't speak the blasphemy straight out like that. Listen, my grandpa and his 14 mistresses would disagree. I ate mushies one time and now I'm like so spiritual. I moved to quartz and it aligned my root chakra so fucking hard. That's the prostate, dork. <laughs> Medieval pores or true pores, they look like the guys that were on day five of Burning Man. But could just be thrown into a cage match with a tiger instead of calling your tech bros to pick you up. Yeah. My grandpa would have never done that, though his father... Ah, uh, interesting. What's the grandpa story? My grandpa got around.
I think it's an Italian thing, but I'm not sure. It might just be a sleazy thing. Round of what? I don't know. Probably whatever was incurable back then. Like Magellan. <laughs> I think I think he had like a whole extra family. Like that kind of getting around. Like he was he was married as far as the church was concerned, but he 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 definitely had like a 26-year-old mistress and two children with her and then a bunch of a bunch of other ones. You could have like three or four families back then. It was not a big deal. Well, yeah, there was no social media, right? That's why I mean, you had spares if one's family started being annoying. Yeah, and also like if one set of children were a failure... You know, you could always rely on the other one. <laughs> Little Timmy gets sick. Well, I guess I'm not going back to that house. <laughs> Well, I got multiple sets of children. Seems like averaging down puts. Risky. Having them in the first place is risky. Your grandparents talk about consumption all the time. I didn't spend a lot of time around them. I don't know. costly to maintain the position no not at all if you were a if you were a business owner in the 1950s you could easily have like four families you could have four houses they were cheap as fuck they were like 20 grand it's like buying a toyota corolla house costs like four weeks of wages well like a nice house nw i'm not talking about some 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 slap together sears fucking house Why no GME chart? It's kind of spicy. It's up 60 cents. It is fucking not. It's just so got time. We're going for a fun ride down. I mean, if by fun ride down you mean retest 75, it's possible. Although momentum currently favors the Bulls, as does positioning. So I would if we did pull back, I wouldn't expect it to last very long.
Look again. It's up 70 cents now. Was he just totally upfront about it, or did this all come out later? Oh, everyone knew. Just no one just said anything. Be right back. I'm selling Jimmy CCs to that other guy. Wait, no, me first. <clears throat> Don't talk about my USPS delivered IKEA house like that. That sounds like a nightmare. God, imagine imagine assembling an IKEA house. That's not going to build your port back, Maeve. Just live in the box. <laughs> it would be easier. I think an Ikea house would be the, much the same as any other house. No, it would. All, this, all the bolts would have Allen keys. It'd be the worst. Like, just little, like, a various set of different sized Allen keys. We'd be trying to put the eaves together and be like, put the skewered in the Nordfer and twist until tightened. Now you have a gum blot. You know. <laughs> My gumblet is infected. <laughs> Swedish made up Swedish words had me laughing out loud in my office. <laughs> when do I get the schleem? You have to squeeze it out later. Lag bolt size Allen key, 20 milliliters. <laughs> Did you ever meet your other unknown cousins? No. We did it at my grandpa's funeral and met four part Mexican cousins. Oh, actually, yeah, I think I did. I met one of my like dad's brothers. I guess he's a cousin. I don't I don't know how that works. Uncle? Like half uncle. Once removed, at least. This guy sent me fucking housing plans from a Walmart. Why is your, why is your PFP the fucking guy from the Jan 6th riots? Where do I find these people? Ah.
Let's get a test 90. That'd be cool. Maybe, maybe when Vic sets 12. Maybe I should have bought the 75s. That was the mistake. Should I average this shit down? 500 risk? No. Thoughts on Neo currently? It's like down a little bit today, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of bouncing back. A little bit of buy the rumor, sell the news. I, I, I still think it looks good over over a couple months. I, I don't think I have. I don't think I have anything too short dated on it. I have like a few Jan calls, but most most of the stuff I have is like sold puts. Actually, I should sell some puts on it while it's down here. I did want to sell some spreads next week. Jan nineteen. Too far out, right? Jan fifth. You're playing Neo with sold puts versus Beyond because Beyond has bankruptcy risk, but Neo doesn't. No, Neo is massively liquid and Beyond is super illiquid. The volatility risk on one is far less significant than the other. I think Zom has 105 potential by Jan 19th. Uh, didn't oil pull back a little bit today? Sure, but you're going to need probably more volatility in the oil market. Maybe if oil gets back to like 
76 or 78. Let's say oil gets back to 78. I can see it. RSP is kind of recovering a bit today, right? Well, right now. Um, NQ still kind of looks like shit. Yeah, we need to see NQ pick up some momentum probably to get. Either NQ or Breath has to come in, one of the two, in order for this to push uh, much higher. What's Beyond doing today? I feel like people should be stoked that Beyond's still holding fucking 850 at this point. They've shorted almost like half the available liquidity on the stock, and they've only gotten it down from... 1019 to 869. Hey, there we go. All right, give me one second. I'll be right back.
Interesting. No, that's not particularly exciting. Getting some call selling. Interesting. But supported 75. <clears throat> I think they're trying. Well, I think they are trying to pump it and in, maybe into the auction. Let's see. Yeah, there's still a little bit, there's still a little bit of put resistance at 80 on the upside. So 80 is 80 is a bit of a resistance still. Um, above a breakout above 80 is really bullish. Some of the 49, 47.95 and 4800 calls picked back up again. Um, so there's there's more interest there than there was earlier when we were trading around 40, 47.70. But it, it still looks like a lot of neutral positioning for the auction. So it's still kind of mixed. And that, that really puts us between like 75, 80. No, sorry. Probably. Has Workhorse ever actually made a viable product? Five year? A five year at one o'clock. There's also a two year FRN. But I don't think the floating rate notes are going to matter a lot. What's GME doing? Nothing. Why are meme stocks and shit coins pumping? Shorts getting out. Check the price it's at. I don't I mean I don't think it's very high risk I'm sure the calls are really cheap but I also don't think there's any reason to assume that the price is going to go up ever for any reason what's at all Let's see, they got a we got a downgrade on November fifteenth and they haven't had any any news since. Uh yeah, and they're still just burning up investor capital. Nice. Setting up a twenty eighteen support level, which is the main reason. Uh, I guess. I mean, buying into that purely on technicals, they have they have a lot more issues than just than just the price. Like a lot has a lot has happened with workhorse between twenty eighteen and now.
like failing to deliver on every promise that they've ever made to investors. Gold up should naturally drag the SPX up, right? I'm getting good at this. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, but whatever. No, but yes. Did you get rid of your temp calls? No, they're they're in the cash account. If we break 80, smooth sailing to 90, it's not smooth, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good shot. There'll be some resistance at 85, but I don't think it'll matter much. Can VIX be predicted based on price action? I would say that vol probably goes the other way, but... You could look at a market that's largely up over a period of time and be like, volatility is probably down there. Man, I wish they would short GME. Uh, I mean, they, they are. It's not, their, it's not very hard. It's, it's arguably the slowest fucking accumulation of shorts I've ever seen on it. Maybe like uh like the period in May to July was kind of like this of twenty twenty two. But with way more options interest. This is cause nobody cares about GME, not even the shorts. That uh, might be true, actually. They they probably don't want to get in while markets are. They probably don't want to short while, like mid caps and small caps are pushing. Right? That'd be fucking stupid. So they'll just let it chop around on index pressure, and then they'll short it later when it's more advantageous. Was Baba squeezing by Friday? Somehow I doubt that.
VIX isn't a company, it's a product. It doesn't go bankrupt. VIX is like paying to go in a room with someone else. You both cover each other in Vaseline and throw cash at each other. And then whatever sticks you can walk out with. But they don't provide the cash. They just provide the room. I have debit spreads for Jan on Baba. I don't have any shares. What? That was a good description of VIX. And how CBOE maintains it. I like VIX a lot more now. Well, don't get too excited. <clears throat> when auction every 15 seconds. Or one o'clock. Which one are you talking about? VIX or... VIX or the five year? Five years at one, so 40 minutes from now. Also, Wind Moon. Maybe before the auction. It seems like they're at least trying for that. SVX wants to taste that new, that new high. New local high. I forgot how boring being a bull is. Oh, that sucks. Oh, come on. You could have broken out harder than that. There we go. Big volume spikes. Everyone taking profit. <laughs> <laughs> paper hands it's on tesla by end of week 275 out resistance at two well it's at resistance and then there's the trend resistance is at uh 265 i wouldn't say 275 is out of the question um but there's there's definitely a lot of resistance in the way Who wants to buy some VIX? <laughs> Anyone? I'm only, I'd, I'd only be picking up like 10. I kind of hope, I kind of hope it falls below 750. And I'm going to like sell the five by the eight. Listen, top's not going down, all right? That's arguably a win after yesterday's 25% move. Flat and above VWAP is a big success. 
God, imagine paper handing your calls on that that little spike. We didn't even break forty seven eighty. How are the tips tips doing? They're they're crossed. Seems like they're trying to get it get shit back under control, but we'll we'll see how successful they are. If indexes break out or IWM moves or Russell moves harder, uh that could be a problem for them. Also don't forget to yeah, if you guys could drop a like. It's a, it's a big help. Um, it gets me one step closer to not being shadow banned. Looking good to break up? Seems fine. I don't know how good it looks. There's like a few dollars of range, probably. Like 85-ish. And then we've got the auction coming up, so it might pull back towards 80. And then we'll see how the auction prints. Are we shaming people for taking profit on top? No. I took profits yesterday. I had I had synth longs that were up like 5x. I wasn't going to fucking just sit on them overnight. I left a few runners, but I, I took profits too. And then I added a few on the dip this morning. Not a, not a lot, but a little bit. Fubo's not trying to mow ass. Okay, so Neo Neo fell back below the two hundred MA today. Interesting. What's the two hundred at? Nine eighteen. I feel like Tup still looks pretty good here. I think that's what my GMA insiders haven't bought recently when the price went as low as $12. I don't know. Cohen didn't spank them enough this quarter. 
Maybe they just refused. Maybe they already own too much of it, and they don't like the idea of Cohen investing their money. <laughs> If you're looking to get into TEP right now, which options would you be favoring? Strike and Expiry. I, I have the ones that I like already. Maybe it's overvalued. Uh -huh. It's also getting close to the end of the year, so it kind of makes sense. Are there still top ETF FTDs? Um, I mean, there's failures of like three, three million on the ETFs that tops in today, I believe. Or was that Neo? That might have been Neo. Hold on. Now Tups, sorry, Tups ETF today, FTDs today are. Uh, oh, today's one hundred thousand for Tup. Tomorrow is seven hundred thousand. And that Neo has three million fails today. Yeah, that's, uh, ETF FTD. Yeah, Neo has three point four. 3.4 million fails today. Although, on Neo, that's nothing, right? That's very, very, very little. Is 4900 still possible? It's not out of the question. Although, with all of this chop, I would say that we're probably we're probably not going to see the upside of 4795. It's it's hard to say if it's it's not it's not that it's unattainable, right? Like they can just do what they did yesterday and buy like 50 million dollars of out of the money calls in one tick we can rock it up but um that doesn't mean they're gonna do that right i know neo's got like a 1.5 billion share float or something like that What are a few things I can work on to become successful at scalping? Uh, planning your entries and risk management. That's really all it takes. It sounds like Tep has more upside potential tomorrow with the FTDs. Not necessarily. I mean, it ran 25% yesterday and it barely had any FTDs. I feel like generally in a situation like what top is currently in, FTDs are probably more likely to lead to flat price action than price improvement. But it depends on how they need to settle them. If they if they're gonna try to sell them with options, then uh, and and through the MM, um, that can be more difficult. If they just buy the underlying, that could lead to price improvement. I don't think there's enough ETF liquidity to cover that many fails, so at least they probably won't turn to ETFs for all of it. But we also don't know which side the fails are on. I mean, they're, they're from ETFs, so it's likely that they're long, but 
or uh, likely that they're short fails. Um, but yeah, they can still they can still satisfy that with options. And under two fifty is problematic. If we were above two fifty, then I would say we we might see some pressure from it. But we'll see where today ends up. Still not over. Far from over. What was the potential of upside end? I don't know, like Jan 6th or something. Explain top like I'm a Parisian baker who didn't make grainy creme diplomat. Um, darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Up in the shore, they work all day. Out in the sun, they slave away. While we devoting full time to floating under the sea. Is that a Lion King reference? No. Did I comprehend full port zero DTE puts? I, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> it's from Aladdin. What's up, popcorn? When Vic's down, I'm sure they could squeeze some more juice out of it today, right? I said what I said, Cobra. No, Neo's not more like Upstart. Upstart's an AI-based fintech company. Neo's an electronic, electric vehicle manufacturer. 
So I'm trying to compartmentalize everything to assist with your autism. Dude, I'm bored. You're not alone. Hedging the downside for the auction? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. I don't want to get Vol Crush too bad, but I might. I just put stops. Uh, this could still go down a bit more. Fill the gap. Yeah. They're going to want to hold seventy six, though. Holy fuck. Damn, they just shorted the fuck out of the top. Look at that. Big 500,000 short. Fun. Getting spicy. Any risk of Fubo running? Sure. Yeah. How much further is this fucking gap? Okay, there it goes. Ah, oh, you bitch. Fuck, I didn't move it fast enough. Okay, 4760, then 4800. Who's with me? I'm still not sure we see 4760 unless there's a fat tail. They stuffing top or a shakeout? Might have been a shakeout. I think just an opportunity to short. Hmm. 
How the fuck is that possible? The total cost of the position is less than that. Buy more of the dip. Volume on top is 3.4 million so far. Yeah. Okay, VIX back to 1250. Yeah, that was sudden. We're expecting this kind of downside. It's not outside of the range. Would have been better for bulls to hold 75, but... I don't think it's a very big deal. Is someone selling calls again? No. No, we kind of just slid down the pits a little bit. There's some put selling now. Probably trying to keep VIX under 1250. A little bit of volatility here is fine as we move towards the auction. I bought some TLT the day of the last Fed meeting. Any idea how high it could go? Like shares? It could go a lot higher if we give it enough time. You could also go down really hard if they don't commit to rate cuts in the first half of 2024. So remember to protect yourself against that, should it come to pass. Bounce or continuation? I mean, we just we just slipped the 75 puts. It's not like... Why does everyone act like something big happened? We moved down $4. Oh,
Moose greater than a dollar big? I mean, no, they're not. Because they're over leveraged. Sounds like it. Actually, we moved down $5. Well, we didn't. We were here. And we moved to here. I didn't go, but I've seen the blooper reel, and it was hysterical. Blooper reel? You mean the live stream of the whole thing? Yeah. Hysterical yet depressing. I mean... Yeah, I guess. Not depressing. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really, like, sad about the individuals involved, right? Like, they deserve to lose all their money. Um, it's more... It's more like how it speaks to us as a society that we have people that stupid in our midst. They could be your EMT. They could be your Uber driver. They could be your CPA. You know, it's just frightening. They could be the CEO of a used game retailer. Let me tell you about this moonshot called Rev. Delisted. Shares are destroyed. It's over. Move on. There's a difference between the things you think and things you know. People struggle to understand the difference. Always ensure you're never victimizing someone based on something you think. Hmm. Kikiku options activity looks weird with zero OI. What's going on? They they did their dividend today. I don't know if the all the brokers have fixed it yet. I mean, there's a big difference between Rev and Bobby Q, right? Rev Rev got delisted and the shares got destroyed, and that was that was it. Right? No one no one no one built a fucking cult around following the bankruptcy proceedings after that point. And ironically, they actually had the money to pay shareholders. Bobby never did. But instead of misinterpreting legal documents for YouTube views and donations, we just moved on like adults. If you're going to gamble on bankrupt companies, sometimes they're actually just going to go bankrupt. <laughs> and you have to accept that. That's part of the deal. People who stayed in Bobby after fucking Cohen sold were just morons anyway.
Just look at the rat nest of wires in a kitchen. I got a three-way light switch, four plugs, daisy chain, the same box of plugs and a switch. Only 1,569 more wiring combinations to try. Help. I'd love to, but you're a poor now. Are you thinking we can still break 80 today or have calls fallen off? No, calls haven't moved. Neither have puts. Everyone's just waiting on the auction. <laughs> it's all good beef i'm just fucking with you man all this talk of bankruptcy and cults is getting me hard about beyond i wonder if anyone's gonna try to go vegan to get beyond's beyond stock price up More calls than puts still? Yep. It even went back to 4774, where the bulls were better off. I went vegan for beyond. I'm still losing money, and now I'm hungry too. Why are you losing money? Nobody should be losing money on beyond. Because nobody should be aggressively buying calls on it. Aren't like eight dollar puts like super high yield? Why, why, why the fuck are people doing stupid shit? Never mind. I already know. Was it eight, eight and a quarter percent yield on a 23 day put? Then you're buying calls. Oh, whatever. I'm over feeling bad for people. We have the Alla. Algatour local Walmarts. Oh, can you just not talk for the rest of the day? I'll never forget the BBBY exit. I saw the tweet, immediately exited everything in like five clicks on Fidelity, 4,000 profit, 6K position. My own version of gone in 60 seconds. I sold everything that wasn't locked in a covered call, and then I sold the rest of it when it hit 15. Nice recovery there. Uh, what did I want to do? Look at top. How's top doing? Top clawing back a little bit. What was a DJ with Bobby? I put my retirement savings into it. Six di six X and left. Well, that's the right way to do it. When do my Bobby shares come back to life? Never. They're dead. Move on. I had longs and no CCs, leaps, synth longs, you name it. Dumped it all as fast as I could. Click as soon as the FSMN tweet hit. I wish I knew what Form 4 was and that Ryan Cohen had the handwriting of a three year old just a few hours in advance. That was announced in after hours. That was the biggest problem. But I, I mean, I was, I, I was taking profits on calls all the way up. 
So that was fine. Oh, one second. Oh, shit. All right, auction results. Mm. Let's see, Fed bid zero, mm. three point eight one five before going into the auction. No results yet. I guess they're not that bad. Bid to cover 2.5, actual 3.801. Oh, so plenty of liquidity, no problem. Five year.
looks pretty good there. Not follow through. Yeah, it seems fine. Uh, I don't know if we're headed to 4,800, but 4,790 maybe right now. Let's see if we break 80 first. 80 is still resistance. How the fuck... How fucked will all this get next year? Yields are tanking so hard, it's almost impossible inflation won't reignite again. Oh, it will. It'll be epic. Or we'll get a credit event that maybe the Fed already knows we're going to get. Have you played the Seasons TFT? No, I haven't. I, I did kind of hear about it, but just not a lot. Probably got out of even a month later. No, I hate SoFi. If it sees any upside, expect shitloads of cover calls to be sold until all volatility is completely crushed out of it. How fucked will this get next year? What's a credit event? Like top going to three dollars? <laughs> <laughs> put selling a little bit of call buying oh, there's the break of 80 what's our high for the day or yeah, past our high for the day there's some put capitulation. Supported 80. Looks bullish. I 
need to keep finding support. A little bit of resistance. Might not matter much. Hmm. Uh, so there's a little profit taking on the calls here and then we'll see if that stabilizes so it's a little bit of in the money call profit taking on the breakout but it should be fine we should we should be able to find support here and keep moving up Hmm. Still struggling a bit more with eighty five than I'd like. Squeezing sold calls, but is IWM dropping right now? No. Kind of choppy, I guess.
Okay, that's fine. Do you hit SoFi as a short-term trade or long-term investment or both? Both. And yeah, I know about all their exposure to student loan refinancing. Yeah, I didn't really predict which way the auction was going to go, but understanding the ranges is what matters. Still think 90 is on the table here? Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a struggle here at 85, which is not unreasonable, um, but we'll see how it plays out. There's still plenty of call interest to the upside. There's a lot of short calls too, though. So we'll see. We'll see what squeezes out, how things reposition. A lot of the puts have sold off, but not all of them yet. Um, the biggest concern here would be call selling. If we see a lot of call selling coming in, we're seeing a little bit of it. But I don't think it's excessive yet. So I think I think the test of eighty five, which is where our first layer of resistance is, is fine. Then we want to see a pullback, but we don't want to see a pullback below. We really don't want to see a pullback below eighty. Like we'd want to probably see eighty hold. And then a move up to retest 85. If we break back below 80, uh, we can get like inundated with sold calls at 80, 85. And then that could end up locking us back into that fucking range we've been trading in all day, right? So we, we don't want to get stuck back in this shit because it's just a mess. So, but another push up to 85, I think, pushes will push out the majority of the remaining puts and um, should push some capitulation on the sold calls. And I think we tested about 80 there. 80, 85. That's close enough. With rolling out March Vega plays, yeah, I started rolling those out to June just because VIX dipped. I got out of a couple of them when we spiked up above VIX 13. They didn't print, but they, they moved closer to break even, and I, I rolled the rest out. So I think mostly now I just have June left. I don't think I have... I don't think I have any more, uh, I don't think I have any more March exposure. Yeah, just June.
Why is GME squirting? It's it's not really. It's up 80 cents. But it's getting some positive pressure from mid caps running, which they are, um, and small caps. And there's just not a lot of shorts on it right now. I mean, it's like we ran right. We did the we did the whole Gamma Max, and then broke Gamma Max, right? Um, but since that, yeah, we haven't seen we've seen some shorting, but not nearly as much as we usually do. So it's not very aggressive, and I think that's more to do with just the current conditions i don't think we're seeing a lot of aggressive shorting on any of the any of the really popular like vol short stuff right you know the way dispersion structured in the market right now everyone's going short vol indexes and they're not really going short vol on the underlying so that'll that'll shift over time and then you know we'll get more short vol activity but it's pretty light everywhere right now, and even lighter on GME. Assuming a credit event doesn't happen this year, do you think the market will grind up for the most part until the second half? I don't, I don't, I don't really think this has a lot of room left. I think we're already way in excess of projected earnings. Um, even if, even if we did have like more upside to this. I think we'd be like under. I still think we'd close twenty twenty four under five thousand, honestly. But uh, yeah, I don't I, even even without a credit event, I don't see this lasting. Right, like you don't need a credit event for inflation to spark back up. You don't need a credit event for the Fed to you know not actually cut rates, which they haven't. Everyone says you know the Fed's pivoted, but the, the, in reality, they have not. The FFR is paused, it's unchanged, and they still have another rate hike on the table, if if they need it. Tubbs tips crossed, they shorted it back the other way, a little bit, um... But gaining, like, it really depends on if they can gain control of it and keep shorting it or not. What's Cat's Gamma Max? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I don't think it matters, but, um... I would assume pretty close to the money. Uh... 299.17. Yeah, QT is not stopping. So there's a there's a lot a lot of the a lot of everything in the market right now that's baked in is based on assumptions, right? Everyone assumes inflation is going to continue trending down, even though even though inflation is technically not trended down at all. Um, it's still flat on fucking September. They just changed the way they calculate healthcare costs and oil dropped, right? But oil's going back up. There's, you know, potential conflict in the Red Sea. Um, you know, if, if there's a, a blockage or more companies decide to divert their shipping from the Suez Canal. You're talking about like trillions of dollars of goods every month. And the, the real effect of that on headline inflation is swift. Um, so obviously protecting, protecting that trade route is of utmost importance for the US Navy right now. We'll see how good of a job they do. Although I don't I don't think their current tactics are gonna be very effective at stopping uh any of the Houthi rebels from attacking any fucking ship they want. Um just because they're escorted uh isn't gonna stop drone attacks, right? Um and then uh they can only escort so many tankers at once, right? They can't they can't they can't cover them all. So 
uh that's that's a really big issue especially if it escalates or continues um and that's an issue both for oil prices which have been con- and production has been continuously cut by OPEC and Russia is supposed to cut even more like another <coughs> 200,000 barrels a month this week <coughs> Meanwhile, if if that shipping route closes, uh, demand for oil is going to skyrocket, right? Um, because then all all of that shipping traffic has to go around the Cape, uh, which increases fuel costs like tenfold. Uh, so you know it generates it generates oil demand as well. Then then on top of that, uh, healthcare costs are going to be reweighted in the first quarter of twenty twenty four. And they're no longer going to be deflationary. They're going to be additive to inflation. Uh, so, so I think I think first off, the assumption that inflation is fixed or going down is kind of a false narrative. Um, and then and then the rest of it is the assumption that the Fed is going to cut rates, that they've already tightened too much or they've over tightened, and really. There hasn't been any talk of rate cuts, right? Like, you know, they, they baked a couple into the dot plot. They're for the end of the year. Um, currently, Fed fund futures are pricing in like a 90% chance of a rate cut in the front of the year. So, you know, none of n- none of that is even realistic yet. And um, with financial conditions continuing to just ease like crazy it's more likely that the fed just sits on their sits on their hands and does nothing right you know how much longer it takes them to go around the cape uh no i think it might vary it's it's i mean it's significantly longer it, this was this was a problem with like the Evergrande, right when it got stuck in the suez canal california exchange costs went up 47 percent. my ppo plan through work went up 25 percent. healthcare costs are expected to rise by like 43 percent this year We can add two weeks to go around the Cape. That sounds about right. How much weight do you put into opinion pieces when researching? Not a lot. I, I mean, I read I read them, but I don't put a lot of weight into them. If they have a compelling theory, then I'll see if it's backed by data. But otherwise, no. <clears throat> I try to stay open-minded. I mean... But I feel like being reliant on data allows me that privilege. Because if I can't if I can't verify something in the in the data, then it's not worth looking at, right? I think it's more than a week for them to go around the Cape. And then when they, if they're tra- if they're moving traffic around the Cape, then Somali piracy is going to pick up, right? Because they're going to be diverting, they're going to be diverting those container ships past Somalia and the East coast of Africa. So you're going to have, you're going to have an increase in piracy on that side. And then, you know, the Navy's busy trying to protect Maersk ships in the Suez Canal. It's it's a fucking mess. Right? Like, there's no way to have this much global conflict without issues arising. And then, you know, increased costs of shipping are going to fuck up China's ability to re- rekindle their economy, um, which could set them back significantly, um, which is good for the dollar and it's good for our reshoring, but it's bad for international trade. And it's likely to accelerate, you know, recessions that we're already seeing pop up in Europe. Even the fucking Fed's own data still calls for like an 80% chance of recession as we move into 2024, right? And the yield curve uninverts. 
I mean, they, they, they removed that from their, from their minutes, but it's there, right? Like the Cleveland fed publishes it consistently <laughs> and, and they're, they're all of their predictions show a decline in GDP growth across 2024 into early 2025. Uh, that is that, that, that will ultimately be negative across th three to four quarters. What the fuck does Panama have to do with it? They're going to go, they're going to go all the way around the other way through the Panama. No, you don't, you don't ship out of the East through the Panama canal across the fucking Pacific. <coughs> it's shorter to go around Africa. I don't even think the Panama Canal can handle that kind of traffic. It'd be fucking backed up for weeks. Yeah, most of these container ships are going into the Mediterranean and into Europe, North Africa. Some are going to, towards the Americas, but not all of them. If they were going towards the Americas, they would divert through the Panama Canal, obviously. But they're not all going that way. Persia's not part of the conflict. It's not a country anymore, Rims and Tims. Healthcare costs go up by 40%. Lays on couch. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's the estimates, is that healthcare costs could increase by 43% this year. I think that was Bloomberg's estimate, or maybe it was JP, JPM. It was either JPM or Bloomberg, I can't remember. But right now, healthcare costs have negative weighting on inflation, which is, what, which is why we're getting like 0 .0, 0 0.1 month over month cpi but the second the healthcare costs come back it's going right back to like 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.4 and then if oil's up simultaneously it'll be even worse okay none of the solutions you guys are suggesting ship to california train to the east coast then ship to europe None of these are more efficient. It's not priced in. What's priced in is a decline in inflation to 2% before the end of 2024. I could definitely see healthcare costs rising, and I work in the industry. You mean send all of our shipping traffic through Russia? Past Russia? That's a great idea. They're, that'll definitely not go badly. How many, how many fucking icebreakers are there even? Like 10, 12 in the whole world? There's just not that many. That's not a viable route either. Is everyone suddenly a fucking maritime expert? Is there even ice left up there? <laughs> All right, so that's a valid opinion. <clears throat> My late uncle was a high level exec for Pacific Maritime, so yes. You mean so no? Your uncle, your late uncle was an expert. Knowing someone shipping adjacent does not make you a fucking expert on shipping.
it is an extraordinarily complex industry, and then you have naval operations in the middle of it, which just adds to the complexity. It's the middle of fucking winter, Sistani. They need icebreakers. Not to mention, you can't take the risk of sending the world's economy through Russian waters. While we've embargoed the fuck out of them on everything. That's just a recipe for disaster. So no one's going to do that. That's that's out of the question. We're not we're not trafficking all of the world's goods through the United States rail lines. <clears throat> Proficient enough to trade it, fine. But you're long it, right? I mean, I am too. I'm 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 also long shipping. You're a bit longer than I am, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Well, more exposed than I am, probably. I have to hope the Gulf Stream doesn't break down anytime soon. Warm water ports in Scandinavia are going to be inaccessible in the winter. I don't think we have to worry about that just yet. Isn't the isn't the forecast for that like 15 to 20 years still? Immigrants can backpack the supplies across the country. Oh, Jesus Christ. Shipping's like 70% of my port since quarter two. That's a lot. That's a lot more exposure than I have. I think it's... Let's see. If you count oil, 8% of my port, roughly. No, I sold a bunch of my AMKBY yesterday. I still have a little bit left, 25,000 shares. All the climate change forecasts keep accelerating for some reason. I wonder why. <clears throat> it's almost like it's a compounding problem or something. Shipping companies. There's ETFs. There's like dry ship ETFs and stuff. Air freight went from 360 a kilogram to 460 a kilogram. That's a bump. If you count oil and nat gas, I'm nearing 90%. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess nat gas too, so might be closer to 10 12% of my port. <clears throat> but that's a huge amount of exposure for me. I'm 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 already yeah, I think I've already got more than I more than I need.
was it March's inflation print that will have the additive healthcare numbers? I think Jan. I think it rolls over in Jan. It moves from 2021-22 to 22-23. I don't think USPS is going to pick up the slack in anything. I don't think the USPS has ever picked up any slack. Is this going to break up? Probably eventually. <clears throat> Looks good. Yeah. I don't see why not. This is what we wanted, that consolidation around 80. So, yeah, I mean, holding 80 is the bullish outcome here. So, it's likely to test higher. <clears throat> hmm. They're not pricing down top options, despite the drop, which is interesting. Yeah, liquidity's still super blown out. There were never any Jan 100 calls on Rev, Jack. My article is currently the latest news article for CMRE. If you check trading view, oh, I don't care. <laughs> if you had to recommend one cut of meat that is best accentuated by soy garlic sauce, which would you say? Chicken thigh. Do you, the market being up from here in five months from now or lower? Do you the, what? Do you the market being up from here? I think, I think, okay. I think it'll be lower. I think there's too much, I think there's far too much speculative value baked into the current prices. That doesn't mean I'm bearish in the short term, but, um, because obviously this, this like vol shorting and continual pumping can continue. But, um, yeah, I would say, I would say I'm pretty bearish over the next five, six months. Is it GME on the screen? It's not a GME. Dude, this hasn't been a GME stream solely for like a year and a half. I, I look at it once in a while. I, I still own a little bit. It's up 86 cents.
largely on index pressure and very little to do with the actual underlying. Like, there's no covering going on there or anything. It's, it's just getting pressured up with the rest of the index. Huh. Not bad. Why the fuck am I looking at this still? Thanks, man. Good to see you. If we get bored of SAX, imagine this was still a sole GME screen. <laughs> uh. Uh, because they did their special dividend today, Fickle Pico Tickler, they'll, they'll fix it. I think it's fixed on most brokerages. Tr try logging out and logging back in and see if that fixes it. This is not a Tesla stream. It's, not any it's, just, a, it's just a market. It's whatever we're looking at at the time. It doesn't have to be focused on one fucking equity. Chat, Jimmy looks spicy, Gary. It's up 20 cents. It looks spicy. It's up 60. It looks spicy. It, 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 none of those values matter to me, right? I don't care if it's up 20 cents or 90 cents. I don't care if it's up $2. Unless there's active covering, I, I don't give a shit. Right? It'll just, whatever happens, it'll just get shorted away. I'll sell some covered calls. You think there'd be a good chance to buy some commodity stock for long-term holds in the future? I'm going to wait for a small market correction, but I'm not sure if I missed the boat. I mean, commodities are still very cheap. <laughs> uh, I don't think you've missed the boat. <clears throat> the VIX correlation's been broken for several weeks now. Still, buy, I, I already have calls. I don't need, I don't think I need to buy more. I mean, I, I could. I think I have plenty of exposure to the upside here. Oh, this is Weeble tech support. <laughs> It's hard to predict short-term outcomes from RC turning it into a mutual fund. I don't think they give a shit about that. I think if RC actually buys into a company, they'll short GME and the company he buys. Um, I, I think I think they're not shorting broadly across all of the popular short volatility stocks because it's risky. Dispersion's not flowing the way they want it to, and they don't want to take on that risk. But it's not just GME, right? Like they're not shorting Upstart yet, not heavily. They're, you know, they're not really shorting Fubo. They're not like none of none of the short vol shit we watch is getting slammed. Look at DDS, right? Like DDS is just fucking chilling at like four hundred dollars. If this if this market has another leg up, they don't want to be caught on the short side of that trade. And they probably won't short heavily until Jan, after we get some confirmation on what the Fed's plan is. Uh, if, the, if the Fed's plan is in line with the market's plan for them to cut rates six times next year. Sorry, five and a half. 
because if it's not then then you know correlation's gonna flow back the other way dispersion's gonna break down and everyone's gonna go short vol on the underlyings how much of one's port can be invested in top without it being a clear cry for help the entirety of my tupperware exposure is like two grand Why would RC invest in other companies instead of buybacks? Because the company he owns is a failing sack of shit. <clears throat> How can I get Vega exposure on Vega? <laughs> <laughs> no problem, Andrew. Beyond's a different situation, right? They have to short Beyond. They don't have a choice. They have to compound their shorts on beyond because if it starts running, it's going to bury their fucking short positions and it's on reg show. You don't want to be caught, caught covering shorts on reg show with a stock that's running away. Right. That's how you end up with like a GME situation. That's not, that's not good. So they, they have to short, uh, beyond and they're not even doing a very good job at it. Right. Like let's, Let's be honest. Like, it doesn't have a huge float. They should be able to get the price down a lot more than they already have. That's not full port. It's like point oh 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 five seven seven hours. I think I said seven percent. This is on my thirty dollars of temp exposure is a higher percentage of my port than your two K to your port. <laughs> it's all relative. Hey, if it prints super hard, you'll do way better than me though. I don't fucking know. Hold on. I can actually do the math. It's like point oh 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 six eight. He's got four trillion guys. Been away for the last two hours. SRX looking good for another push higher. It's trying. Yeah. I, I would say it still looks pretty good. I erased one of the zeros.
1.4 trillion. <laughs> Any chance for a vol up spot up rep? Mm, I think we'd have to see a little bit of that because there's short calls at 85 and 90. Do I need to buy in the money UVXY calls to get Vega exposure on Vega? Are you trying to get like v v Vana exposure? Like the thing, the thing you're saying makes no sense. I want 2x leverage on Vega. So find a product that offers 2x leverage on VIX. Vega Vega is just the multiplier of implied volatility. If you want 2x leverage on Vega, find something with 2.0 Vega. Or read the fucking book so you understand what the Greeks mean. <laughs> Buy two calls. <laughs> read? Never mind. I don't those line up. Gork, help, dick stuck in buck, what do? Tried tickling his antlers. Hmm. I don't like this retest of 80. We never really tested 80. We've got to do a real one. I'd prefer to avoid that. There. There's your real test. Are you? Welcome to Dillionaire. Thank you so much, man. Uh, hit me up on the Discord. I'll get you added to the Country Club after the stream.
Well, there's a test of 75. That's fun. Oh, it's going to be such a long day now. God damn it. Are we testing all the things? What the fuck is going on? Oh shit, yes, sold off super hard. What the fuck was that? That's not proportional. De-risking? Double time. I don't see any big changes in positioning besides big futures sell off. So we'll see if puts pile into this, but so far I'm not seeing a lot. Still support at 60. Oh, futures broke 4820. Oh, I'm fucking closing these. Uh, two hours. Hmm. Yeah, I mean. Okay, so if the other leg of the auction straddle wants to get out, then they'd be, they'd start exiting now. Uh, 
I know we broke the trend. Okay, uh, reversal then? Might be short-lived. I was back in the trend again. Is 47.90 still on the table? Yeah. Ninety ninety five is probably the max of the upside range, though. It really depends on how this failure recovers. This is already far more volume than I would have expected. It seems like a big fail to regain. That's not. We had this one the other day. <laughs> that was way bigger. That was 20 bucks. This is. Thirteen. Once all the puts go away, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah, if this forces the puts to capitulate, it can bounce really hard. It's just a big future sell off. Might have been might have been de risking short Vega. But if they're gonna start de risking short Vega, then we're not we're not far from this turning around on a larger scale. <clears throat> TLT crossing a hundred, a big deal. Eh, yeah. Futures are kind of wild right now. There's still a lot of volume. Hmm. 
It's still slightly bearish. Up stuck here. You think the sudden pivot on cutting interest rate can be based on the need to lower the interest payment on our debt? I'm sure that's part of it. Because Yellen just won't stop issuing. So. Hmm. Not really sure if futures buyers are going to regain their foothold at forty eight twenty yet, but they're trying. Well, that was exciting. Yellen's the true G Chen here, gambling with the entire nation's future. And it's not her fault that Congress fucking blows money. Hmm. 
was a fucking broad sell off, man. Right. Is downside more possible now that VIX has spiked? I think it really depends on if futures hold 4820 or not, or regain 4820. Right now, this doesn't look super bullish, but they are trying very hard to reverse it, and they usually are successful at catching the falling knives. We got another leg down from here, 47.60. Which would put us at about, oh, 48.10 on futures. Although, it does look like futures is starting to find support. This is, the, this is on the 15 minute, though, so it's a little slower to be realized, but... That was a big fucking sell off. And that's where the prior trend was. Oops. Call buying starting to pick up a little bit out of the money again. 70, 75. Selling puts again. I forgot to mention, I got myself a Christmas present, a new hair trimmer. Oh, no, I bought one of those. One dude in here got me really concerned about my manscaping at work, of course. Nice. What brand did you get? I had a wall, and I fucking hated it, so I replaced it with a baby bless. What's up, publicist? It's sad that's well, I mean, that was a big volumetric sell off. It would have been significant any day.
Are puts capitulating? They're going to want to here in a minute. Especially if we break back above 75. Yeah, I bet. Seventy five should be resistance on the upside. Another little spike in VIX. Hmm. They fucking sell calls on the drop? Uh, still more call buying here. <sighs> Phillips Norelka. Okay, nice. Could we test 85 again? Yeah. Although I think I think 4795 4800 are out of the question for today. I'd be they'd have to buy a lot of calls to the upside to push push higher than that. VIX up, SPX up, market broken. <laughs> Not necessarily. Bulls selling. I don't think they sold too many puts. Actually, I think I think they I think they closed some Vega risk. I'll have to look tonight, but that's that's what it looks like right now. And if they're de-risking, well, we all know what that means. It's not end of day, though. It's 2 o'clock. It means more up? No, it doesn't. That means it probably means the ups are coming to an end. Bold of you to assume that I know what's going on. Well, the only other periods we saw de-risking were late July, mid August, mid September. So, if we're starting to get de-risking, that's also going to mean calls are going to get pretty dangerous. I was wondering if we saw de-risking into yesterday's open because they pushed VIX up so hard in the pre-market.
Is it looking more likely that we have a juicy down day like last Wednesday? Well, hopefully something like that, but then with a continuation on the end of it. Yeah, there was almost nothing that indicated that drop was coming. That's interesting. Hmm. I think this is getting bearish. There we go. Pump it. I think I'm going to get some downside exposure. And on the longer term time frame, Cobra, calm down. Hey, wait, did your 4770s print? Yeah, it's still, we're not, we're not done with the ups for now, but it's an interesting dynamic if it persists. It also makes upside tests super fucking risky. You know I'm still holding diamond hands. <clears throat> hmm. Short that vol. <sighs> the 2 p.m. margin call. Okay. Ugh. It, it started, I mean, I don't know, it technically started before 2 p.m. Jokes with the market maker because I thought it was Thursday due to the holidays. Now I can diamond hand these tough weeklies a whole extra day whilst drinking tiger blood. <laughs> I won't forget it, Yaga. Thank you. Mm. 
Yeah, Dork, I guess this was the warning. But odd one. You see where I highlighted it? We'll see. They need another round of ball shorting to push us up off of uh, 75. 75 is kind of uh, it's it's still got it's still holding on. There's still a lot of putts at 75. But if we break clear of 75, it can it can move pretty hard. Isn't it normally the first week of Jan super volatile? Yeah. <clears throat> yields back to april may levels now maybe treasury shorts are starting to take profit but treasury shorts would be fucking getting murdered right now they've been getting out for the last seven weeks Time for some 300 wide bear putt. We'll see. If this breaks up higher, that's really bullish. Like if this if this downside test breaks up. Then we might see a retest of the trend. Uh, if we see a retest of the trend, we might see a breakout. I wonder if the megaphone's really viable here. It kinda is. a little a little wonky there that's better on futures
Top rips to open price before close. That seems to have found a bit of a bottom. Uh, it's recovering, but really slowly. I will say it looks a little better than it did earlier today from a liquidity perspective. So that started to turn back around. Looks like maybe they're almost out of out of shorts. Yeah, and if this if we see liquidity move up higher from here, that's that's a pretty good sign. And by any pits. Well, you know, I'm trying not to use Dillionaire DD so I can prove my own analysis. I think Tesla would be a promising short soon. Um. Tesla moved up today to what? 262.10. So gamma max on Tesla is at about 270. Well, it's pretty close to testing it. Um, it gets more bearish if it falls back below 250. Tentatively bearish below 250. Uh, and then, yeah, still needs to break that 230 mark. I guess 235, it might start to see some slightly more accelerated downside. I will say that the call positioning hasn't hasn't really stuck. Um, sold puts were starting to take profits yesterday. Um, if that continued today, which it probably did, that might weaken the the upside positioning. But I would say... Yeah, it still needs to go back below 250 to initially confirm a drop, and then it really like to confirm a bigger drop, it needs to break 230. So still, still a lot of downside that needs to be realized. What the fuck is this? Not good. Fix up. Some put buying. Call selling. Still need one more breakout. Okay, that's fine. That, however, does not look fucking good. Hmm. Losing control of all again a bit. Did 
Dixie, 190. 10-year, 3.79. The three-month is under the FFR right now. There's the Fucking 70 is weak, man. Are the pumpers dead? No. That was very impressive. Oh, one candle of like decent upside. Higher low here is still bullish. But it's a it's a risky test, especially with vol climbing. Check DMs. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. I want to get some longer dated downside exposure. No way we can get back to 80, 85, right? I mean... Unfortunately, yeah, we still can. There's there's still enough interest. I would say 90s 90s fallen off enough that we're unlikely to see it. And as as we move closer to the end of the day, it becomes and we're in this range, it becomes more likely we close 70 like 70 75. But we'll see. We still got like an hour and fifteen minutes. We can move quite a lot in that period of time. Is that a Oh, okay. I see you've, you've yep. All right. Like lucky 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 Chinese coin cat. <laughs> it's uncanny. It kind of is, you know. Years.
Yeah. Manikineko? Zuki Corn Cats are at the Umi of Japan checkout and Masterwork. I'll hail the brown sauce. <laughs> Dixie's actually kind of dying today, yeah. I ate some bad roast beef, and I don't feel good. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you not... Did it not smell bad? I want you to answer as honestly as you possibly can. Bear song at 40, please. It's too enthusiastic, dork. First of all, we'd have to lose 60, which has an insane amount of resistance. Do you feel like these just look like many little head and shoulders? I guess if we lose 70, we're going to 60. Hmm. Gap fill on the upside at 74. Fall shortings kind of fucking failing again. Thanks, guest, guest. Food is a weird word, is it? I'll give the bulls this. They never quit, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Lugubrious is a weirder word. It's a better word. Or lugubriousness. I said some leftover turkey from Thanksgiving. Winning. No. No. Obsequious is a weird one. Also the word weird. Hmm. I'm going to go walk my dog. Usually this happens. Price action rockets 30 bips. Which direction? Fucking dog's not a useless indicator if it's agnostic. Consumption is a weird word because it refers to the actual, actual digestion of food. And uh, just gathering foods and storing them in your home. Infarction? It feels made up. Might be. All right, see you in a bit, Cobra. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Failing again.
We haven't rescued all the calls yet. Still 75 and 80 calls. Sixty five puts are building quite a bit. Calls are still closing. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe we don't fill the upside gap. Gaps are illegal in this market. They're not illegal. This is kind of nuts. Bulls gonna lose? It's been a million years. Like, this doesn't look good at all. I can only do it if we actually test 40, Derek. We're going to get one more bull push, too. And depending on how far that carries us, that could mean that we just stay at 75 and to close, right? Bulls, fuck bulls, bulls suck. <laughs> Can you moan when the bull push is complete? Why would I choose moaning as the way to describe that? Yeah, so this breaks up, right? And then we see how far this goes. Either this just tests the gap and fails, or it keeps going. And then if it breaks resistance at 78, it's going to keep going into the end of the day, right? But if it fails in the gap, we can close the day at 66. <laughs> Which I'm not sure is much better, but it's a funny way of saying forty-seven forty. You have a you have a funny way of saying forty-seven sixty-five. I don't show a gap on my chart. It's okay. It's just wrong.
You have a funny way of saying words with your mouth hole stuck in. You have a funny way of saying words with your your butthole, engineer man. You've never you've just never heard me sing. Would have been funnier if you said you have a funny way of saying words with your stock hole mouth man. But it's too late now. Oh well. I'll save it for next time. You sound like a bass, which definitely means first tenor <laughs> no no baritone Can the bulls do it? Why is Vic spiking to the upside? Look what the fuck is actually going on here. AAP is number one on Fintel's Gamma Squeeze list. Gross. So the gap is filled. Vol is moving up. Are we getting like longer dated short interest or something? Like put buyers? That's, that can't be a real thing. No. Uh, maybe a little. Someone want this to go back to 4,500? The Vox dude told me that more stocks are concurrently gamma squeezing than exist in the market. <laughs> uh, he banned me on Twitter. You know what, Dork? I don't think I feel comfortable moving forward without some downside exposure after today. Earnings season's still a few months out, though. Now, uh, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna start to see earnings in late Jan, right? Yeah, I don't know if this lasts till Jan Opex. I'm gonna be honest.
just that the timing is odd. It is. Well... Is it? I am... The week after New Year's is kind of volatile. Would you stay away from QQQ that changed their options? Chainsaw? Didn't they fix that shit already? So it's 304 now. We test 4780 before end of day. High or low? We got another double bottom. Let <sighs> me just see if it pushes up here. I think if the Bulls fuck this up, this is the last one they've got, though. If this fails without breaking 80, they're fucked. They stay away from QQQ and the change to their options change so I just didn't I just tell you that? They should have fixed it. It's just a dividend. They should adjust for it. Is there enough time to tap ninety? Yeah, uh, maybe eighty five, but I don't think we'd see ninety. And failing here is not good. Basically, basically, if bulls fail anywhere in here, they're fucked. Because like 75 and 80 are kind of the last vestiges of their real support. They need to get it above that to have anything, anything to stand on. And then, and then if they can. If they can get it above that, then they can start buying, like, out-of-the-money zero GTs and try to drive it higher than 80. Fail is a new low? Yeah, like, like even even if this breaks out, right, um, and we get the upside test of, at 80, um... Like, a failure can still drop us, like, all the way down to, like, 65. So, like, if there's too much profit taking on the call side, on the bounce, and that's what killed this and uh, this was there was just a shitload of profit taking um i mean with 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 those with those profits taken however this one is less likely to see um as extreme well the same extremes so there should be less profit taking on this bounce 
provided they can get the momentum to get the bounce. They've got to clear the big chunk of puts here at 75. And then they've got to get above 80 to push the puts far enough out of the money that they're not pulling down on price action anymore. But if they can do that, then they can keep pushing into the end of the day. Yeah, I know they had a special dividend. They'll, they'll fix it eventually. It was like 21.66 a share or something like that. And it's it's already trimmed from the from the options price. I would have been happy with 47.40 end of day. Yeah, that would, I don't think that's going to happen. Ah. It's only 75 bips, bruh. <laughs> It's too much resistance at there's way too much resistance at fifty. Um, but there's a lot at sixty still too. And I think what matters is the number of bips from eighty, which is the most likely point at which this fails, right? <clears throat> There's the push. There's the big short push again. Mm, fucking shitty momentum, man. Look at that. I should just go from here. I think it's like uh, about 10, 15 minutes dark. What do you think about 30 DTE Mara 30P? 
I don't like I don't like to put positions on them, just because like Bitcoin can spike again, and if it if it spikes really hard, everyone's gonna flood back into the call side and blow up your short. It's just it's just too risky. There's there's safer bets. I mean, Neo has a massively liquid float, so, yeah. Are they losing it? No, they're fighting. Did somebody already take responsibility for buying the three dollar Beyond Jan twenty twenty five ten C? No, but that doesn't seem like a terrible option. A little expensive. Is Rob Robin had just notified me the top is up thirteen point seven three percent today to two dollars and thirty two cents. Well, I hope it's fucking predicting the future. <laughs> it looks like it's down ten percent. Yeah, I wonder if this VIX spike to 14 is what kind of turned the tables here. Ooh, diamond top test tomorrow? Getting close. If you want to play a breakdown of this, where do you confirm a fail? A drop back below 75. So like 70, probably like 72, 73. I guess 74. 74 is a pretty good point. If you were a betting man, what would the odds you'd give to breaking 80 again, at least for a bit? I mean, I want it to. This one was backwards. Past performance equals future returns.
full push in like a couple a couple minutes and then maybe another one. It's like two minutes, then 10, 15 after that. Top is doing something. It's holding above $2. Which is the most important thing Top could be doing right now. This should be the baby, the baby breakout, right? Harder. Okay, nearly enough zero DT fucking calls. Super ridiculous. Oh. We're actually in a bare pennant. That was fucking weak sauce. I'm gonna have to wait longer then. Which is this going to pull back? If it pulls back much more than this, that's kind of bad.
No, I don't think it's a bear trap necessarily. There's call capitulation on the drop. I'm trying to buy their way out of it, but it might not work. Some of those days when it's better to stop trading? Probably. QQQ, 2 million volume candle. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. So it stalled out of that, that, that like seventy three dollar confirmation point. Charms working against them now, right? Gap fill. Almost. Oh shit, did we fail the gap? Three seven seventy five thirty Hmm. 
wait for it? This is kind of exciting. I wonder where today is going to close. Right here. <laughs> That's a distinct possibility. <clears throat> I mean, puts could technically pile in. And boy, would they have a lot of range if they did. They wouldn't have that much range, popcorn. It's ridiculous. But 60? I mean, that's like a $15 drop. Missing... Uh, missing this breakout... And this one fucked the bulls pretty hard. That wasn't good for them. I don't I don't know if they can actually recover from here now. And they're gonna try, but if we if we lose this I think it's game over for the Bulls. Yeah, 73 is pretty important. Bared up. I'm just nothing right now. I don't know. I'll probably buy like a 15 minute to expiry, depending where we end up here. This is where they had the problem shorting VIX before, right? 1250. It's done for the Bulls if they fail 73. Otherwise, they, they still have calls at 80. There's a breakout. Twenty six fifty on futures. Twenty eight 
24 minutes left. I don't know, 85, 80, maybe? It, between 80 and 85, but I don't know about 85. There's like, there's not a lot of calls left at 85 now. Breakout and like, is that like 340? So it, this is either going to fail in the next three minutes or it's going to break higher and retest the high for the day or close to the high for the day. Maybe like uh, 47, 83, 68. But it can fail, right? If bulls, if bulls take profit here, especially at the 75, then they rug pull their own support. I haven't really picked a direction yet. I'm waiting. Probably about eight more minutes. Pushing pushing this early for the <laughs> call side is usually not a good sign. I'm going to give us a sell side imbalance. Been a while since you've mentioned EXR. It seems to have done well. We, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, it's been killing it. We weren't. Yes, we were. Okay, just because you sold at break even. Puts her calls fortune teller. I don't know yet. Like the, the, the positioning that's there doesn't tell me what people are going to buy or sell in the future, right? I just understand how the positioning structured and which outcome is more likely. I don't have like a time machine. I'm trying to explain how to do this. Just use the magic. I will say that right here, something's going to happen, either up or down, and then that will probably reverse into the end of the day. Hundred K volume on forty seven eighty C today, all for naught. I'm not sure that those are. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that those are bought. <laughs> I think I think a significant chunk of those might be sold. I don't want the forty-seven seventy. But do I? Hmm. All right. Fuck it. Let's go.
Still need to lose this. Stomp it. I already started taking profits. <laughs> Fifteen minutes still. Come on, you fucks. Let it go. We lost. It's it's where it's where my crudely drawn line is. That's that's the that's the point that matters. I love it when Gert talks to Wall Street. Oh man, well that was the smallest bet of the day. It was a fun 50 bucks to make. Nice, man. You're gonna be really pissed if it goes like a thousand X. Oh, don't you do it. Don't, no. Get away from the dip. Ah, oh, you fucking cunts. Maybe it's not working. Maybe they're already fucked. <gasps> Charmadillo? I pay you good money. Why are you crudely drawing anything? Just shush, shush. No, you don't. You're not even a member. They're fucked. Fuck this market. Fuck you too, man. No, I don't mean that. I love you, dork. Imagine being a bear. Imagine being a bull. They both suck.
Don't beg it. Threaten it, Popcorn. You look weak. Imagine being an ape. I think we can all agree that's disgusting. If we go down, I'm not going to cry. Okay, maybe I'll cry <laughs> for 20 minutes. Sometimes when you're selling pets, you're just making the market maker short. Like that naughty hedgy last week. There's still 12 minutes of this shit left. They can't yoink mine. I'm toe ringing this shit. I, I know this is crazy, but imagine if they fail twice. <laughs> That's fun. Ooh, that was some desperate shit right there. What, does Kenny's fund blow up at 47.70? Just fucking let it go. Jesus Christ. Huge red candle on ESNQ. Yeah, but they'll just reverse, right? I guess watching the one minute on futures. Gross. What's in the one minute on an SPX? Yeah, because it's classy. Hmm. 
mod me so I can swear uncontrollably at the bulls. You just have to have faith that the bears will ha will have the day. They they took it this far, right? The bulls are like wily coyote, hanging onto the edge of a cliff, and the bears are roadrunner pecking at his fingers. Beep beep. This is, this is like a lot of work for a fucking like a five dollar range. Nice, Jen. Can we open up 1% down tomorrow? I mean, I hope not. I'm not ready for that. Safe to say it's a stalemate? Yeah, well, bulls are getting an edge. Although I suppose they can sell off all their 75s, and then I can just tank again. Like that. <laughs> this is fun. Fucking 40, 4820 support, man. The bane of my existence. Oh, shit. The bears fought valiantly. Or the bulls fought themselves valiantly. Nice adopted by the Dans. The Bulls did win Vix today. Yeah, yeah. Quite a lot.
Oh, now they got like three minutes. They could really go for it. Interesting. So forty eight twenty eight resistance forty eight twenty support. Fucking eight dollar range all day. <sighs> Top ripped to ten dollars before close. Nope. Not the same as ten dollars, actually. I don't I don't I don't think there's any chance top gets to ten dollars. It's ridiculous. Fuck. Yeah, this is this is that last last one minute push. So you're gonna get a closing settlement of forty seven eighty eight. Forty seven seventy eight. All right, Bulls, we get it. No, you don't. Ding, ding. Cool. 70% of the day's gains on the last candle. Well played. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That was, that was, uh... That was entertaining, to say the least. I guess we had to test that upper trend. Yeah, most of that push was from Futures. But uh, anyway, it's getting rejected. Overextended, now the market maker is going to sell off after market close. Um, still largely in the same range we started the fucking day at, right? Um nothing nothing really special here uh, commodities up a little bit again today dollar down quite a bit now now trading below 101 and yields yields dropped off tremendously with that highly highly liquid auction earlier on the five year um correlation on the one month pushing pushing down below the three month correlation um not a lot of change here. Uh, a bit of deleveraging in USD JPY since yesterday. Um, probably you know, goes alongside the dollar there, but down to around six hundred and twenty percent. So we're not we're not seeing them push back into that. Um, and generally, the deleveraging of this is kind of bullish. It pushes down on yields um, and drops the dollar. Right. So. Uh, but we are still seeing vol convexity pick up um, day over day. Not it is still trending up slightly, but not not a lot of change there. Um, skews turning back up again, which is probably bullish. Jesus Christ. 
Vix's <laughs> Vix's uh closing the day twenty point seven six. So this week's almost pushing us beyond uh our prior low uh twenty point nine three. I'd imagine if we get much I know intraday today this was this was actually uh like twenty one point two three. Um that's fucking nuts. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's pretty, 20.9 is, was the low before Vlomageddon. And we're at 20.76 right now. So we're about to exceed that. Uh, 84% of the S&P 500 above its 20 day moving average. Um, GME is still not a lot of shorting going on. Uh, also no covering, uh, despite the one dollar move to the upside today. Um, there's there's really no short covering there. Upstart got a little bounce. Fubo did too, but it pulled back a decent chunk of it into the end of the day, and now a little more after hours. Siri, I don't care about that. Uh, top, yeah, it kind of held its own. It's up another two percent after hours. They're gonna be digging for liquidity overnight. We'll see how much they can get, but uh, if we start to see more covering, um, this is gonna start to move a lot harder. I think once once we kind of break below that bound, uh, covering is going to accelerate. And the pressure doesn't seem to be relenting there. Uh, Russell still closed the day up, 36 BPS. So uh, beyond getting shorted, but hanging in there, you know, like a champ. So it's doing, it's doing surprisingly well, given how actively it's been shorted, which has been uh, quite hard since the 20th. And... Uh, Still holding up above that like seven fifty level, which is very important. Um at above eight dollars. And pressuring the put wall at nine a little. So I, I think I think I think it's holding in a really good range. Uh Neo, I don't really have anything to say about it. It got rejected off the two hundred MA yesterday. It might move up to retest again tomorrow. And that's going to be at about $9.18. RSP up 16 BPS today. Most of that game in the last candle. And QQQ up 15 BPS today. Also most of it gained in the last candle. Um, so index is surging up into the end of the day to highs. Not seen since yesterday's close. Or, well, today's open. <laughs> So a pretty uneventful day overall. Um, kind of flat, but a lot of price action. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you bright and early tomorrow at 9 a.m. Later, everyone.